For those of you who have been around the internet for some time, you may notice that as soon as the air starts to get crisp, the leaves start to change, and pumpkin spice latte signs become unavoidable, one particular YouTube persona seems to be mentioned everywhere. This person is Russ McCamey, creator of the now infamous McCamey Manor, a quote-unquote haunted house that at one point was deemed to be one of the most frightening Halloween attractions one could visit. McCamey Manor had many curious visitors over the years, with some even coming from other countries to see if they could survive the tour. As years passed, however, this terrifying attraction morphed into what many would consider a scam. Russ's audience has deteriorated, as there now seems to be more detractors speaking out against him than fans supporting him. Just last year, documentaries were released on Russ McCamey and McCamey Manor, exposing him for his unethical operations of the haunted house and going over very serious claims made by those who either knew him personally or went on his tours. Additionally, a YouTube series was published by a creator known as Reckless Ben and his friends, one being Danny Burke, where they infiltrated McCamey Manor. This series not only revealed that the manor is falsely advertised, but also that Russ himself is not a very great person. Testimonies shown in both the documentaries and YouTube videos accused Russ of taking joy in humiliating, distressing, and harming others. And that brings us to the year of 2024, where Russ has been arrested with some extremely sinister charges. For those of you who have seen my mashup video a couple weeks ago by the time that I post this, I've mentioned the story of Russ McCamey's arrest very briefly and pointed out a few articles discussing it. But as information has developed, I wanted to point out even more information regarding this issue. Because number one, a lot of information has since been revealed, especially thanks to YouTubers like Danny Burke, Reckless Ben, and The Horror Road Trip. And two, because of the outcome of this situation, which we will get to, this story deserves to be discussed in more detail. So let's back up here. Russ is a now 65-year-old man who, up until last year, was trying to pitch McCamey Manor as a legitimate haunted house for people to tour. Years ago, this place actually was considered a quote-unquote extreme haunt, but in recent years, it seems to just be some weird boot camp with tons of waivers, if you could even get past Russ's social media barrier. See, in order for you to tour the manor, you would have had to join his Facebook group, and in order to do that, you would have had to jump through tons of hoops to even get accepted because of the mass amounts of criticism Russ has received online. One big thing that Russ was criticized over was claiming that thousands of people were on a wait list to tour the manor, but whenever somebody actually expressed genuine interest in touring the manor, Russ would supposedly move that contestant to the front of the line. Yes, you heard that word correctly, contestant. See, the catch is if you survive the extreme haunt of McCamey Manor, you can win $20,000, but to the current day, nobody has received such prize. The worst of this, however, is that Russ was accused of putting these contestants through tormenting situations before they could even enter the manor. This was not done in a spooky way, either. He wasn't making people do trials, walking through a bunch of spider webs and plastic skeletons. He was making them do boot camp styled activities that far exceeded what would be considered humane. As exposed in Reckless Ben series last year, it seemed as though these boot camp styled prerequisites were purposefully done to disqualify contestants early so they couldn't make it into the manor because at that point the manor was barely existent to begin with. Prior to this version of McCamey Manor, there were other locations and attractions that seemed to be more legitimate, but those attractions caused a great deal of mental and physical damage, all of which Russ seemed to be overjoyed with and would record for his YouTube and Facebook pages. If you even wanted to enter McCamey Manor, you would have had to sign a 40 plus page waiver that gave consent to being put under extreme conditions. But as far as my knowledge goes, liability waivers don't protect the business owners from from things like gross negligence, reckless behavior, or intentional harm, which is what many contestants claim to have gone through and have accused Russ in one way or another. Russ had also been accused of treating women and veterans the worst throughout all of this, using vulnerabilities against them and causing a great deal of psychological damage, seemingly for his own pleasure. For years, many have spoken out against Russ McCamey and even made petitions to get the manor shut down, and this only increased after a documentary release 
released on Hulu in 2023 titled Monster Inside, America's Most Extreme Haunted House. The focus of that documentary shifted not only to the unethical practices of McKamey Manor, but also the terrifying personality of Russ McKamey himself, which also happens to be the main focus of today's video. On Friday, July 19th, 2024, Russ McKamey was arrested after authorities were notified of him as his girlfriend. The charges soon escalated to attempted second-degree murder and RPE. According to an article written by WKRN, more charges were made accusing Russ of trying to end his girlfriend's life more than once. When the charges went up, his bail went from a $1,000 bond to a $100,000 bond, which at the time he seemed to have achieved, and since then there has been a hearing and the charges have since been dropped. But due to some complicated and conflicting information which we are going to go over in today's video, this situation is not as cut and dry as you might think. The way that I understand this situation is that the charges may have been dropped, but the case itself is isn't fully dismissed, therefore can be reopened at a later date. There's a more formal term for this, titled a nole prosequi. Nole prosequi. Yes, I looked up how to pronounce it. Yes, I am also confused that this is spelled with an E and this is spelled with an I. Doing a quick Google search, apparently it basically is similar to a dismissal, just allowing the charges to be brought back up at a later date. We have much more about this to dive into in a moment, but first, let's rewind a little bit and go back to about a week or so ago when Danny Burke posted this video on YouTube. Titled, Owner of McKamey Manor Arrested, Interview with Ex-Girlfriend Leaked Audio Clips. Due to how deep these guys were into investigating Russell, McKamey last year, not only have they made a reputation for themselves being major detractors for McKamey and McKamey Manor, but they also made quite a few contacts with people which I fully believe aided in finding more information out regarding this issue, especially when it comes to a YouTube channel known as Horror Road Trip. We'll get into that more later. Now this isn't going to be a reaction video or a re-upload of Danny's video by any means. I'll be linking the video down below for you to watch, but I do want to discuss some additional information that has been revealed in this video because I think it adds a lot of context to these articles that I have previously discussed. I do want to let you know that there are a bunch of voice recordings that were shared in Danny's video as well as graphic images. I will not be showing those voice recordings or the graphic images in this video, but I wanted to give you a heads up that if you plan on watching Danny's video, those voice recordings and images are in that. Quite a few people, specifically those involved in Horror Road Trip, who knew about Russ noticed alleged patterns of abuse towards his ex-girlfriend. They claimed that Russ had isolated her and even tried using her to talk to them to get information on them, to dig up dirt. Even she herself mentioned not being allowed to have any friends during her interview with Danny. You know, when I was there, I wasn't really allowed to have friends. You weren't allowed to have friends when you were dating them? No. Voice note recordings were also played in this interview where Russ is displayed, do I need to say allegedly? It sounds like his voice screaming at her for conversations that she's had with other people, including simply wishing somebody a happy birthday. And from what I understand, this was from before Russ had gotten arrested. This is what was described when Danny asked her, when was the first time he made you feel unsafe? In Danny's interview with Russ's ex-girlfriend, Shay, she mentioned feeling unsafe during arguments because she claimed that Russ threatened to knock the door down if she locked herself in a room. She also claimed that Russ hit her with a flashlight while she locked herself in a car and allegedly dragged her out of the car. So the first time he made her feel unsafe, he allegedly hits her with a flashlight and allegedly drags her out of a car. That's terrifying. And there are other accusations of Russ getting physical towards some of his other ex-girlfriends, one ex claiming that he would threaten her life and would also express very sick fantasies about children. Which I believe I also mentioned this clip in my previous video, but I'll play it again for you to hear in case you missed it. Not only are there claims that he had treated some of those women horribly, but there have also been many accusations from several different women that Russ would tell them about having wildly inappropriate thoughts and fantasies about kids allegedly yeah he fantasizes about kids and whatever woman is in his clutches he's gonna tell his dirty fantasies to you know he would have these dreams about young boys young girls and he would wake me up and say please tell me it doesn't mean anything and sometimes he would tell me that he had inappropriate thoughts about kids and he couldn't help it he would ask me to tell him that it was okay or that nothing means nothing his descriptions at first were really vague and then slowly as time went by became much more explicit. He would go to Walmart while I was there shopping and 
he would just be looking at kids, looking at kids in like um, in dresses and skirts, girls, boys, teenagers. I want to make it clear that these, however, are just claims as far as I am aware, but I will link Savannah Marie's video down below for you to see as she shares much more information regarding this and so much more when it comes to his relationships. Speaking of which, and just a heads up, we're about to get into some really dark stuff here. Shay accuses Russ of ch her on their front porch, causing her to pass out, and after she regained consciousness, she had a seizure. Now, the others who Danny interviewed who were trying to help Shay claimed that the cops originally did not do anything when they were first called for help. In the next part of this interview, Shay explains how after their argument, she was still upset with Russ and didn't want to do anything intimate with him. But Russ allegedly ended up doing things without her consent, and it escalated to him choking her again, which once again made her pass out, and she again woke up having another seizure. The way that this is described is that there were moments where things were consensual and there were moments where things allegedly were not. This seeming to be one of the non-consensual situations. And yes, that is to imply that this had allegedly taken place more than once, according to Shay. I've said no before too, and he just kept going because he was trying to make up and stuff. And I was saying like, hey, I actually don't want to right now. He's done stuff without consent more than like a couple times. It happened a few times before. And like when I told him like, hey, when this happened, it made me feel like this. But I think in his mind, like the argument's not resolved unless we make up and do stuff. Thankfully, Shay was communicating with the Horror Road Trip group prior to passing out. Boston, who was one of the people involved in Horror Road Trip, was very concerned due to Shay's lack of responses, so she contacted authorities, which this time it seems like they actually took action and it ultimately led to Russ's arrest. Shay also claimed that Russ would vocalize his intrusive thoughts of wanting to end her life, but it also seems like a pattern of behavior for Russ, as other exes have accused him of quote unquote sharing intrusive thoughts about hurting them. <laughs> that during our fight he had the intrusive thought that he wanted to like me and bury me in the yard. I shared with her some of the stories from his other exes that are out there in the public. He has a woman and he threatened violence against me. With how Russ is described, who has actively ran an attraction that has caused physical and mental harm to others, who has had multiple ex-girlfriends calling him dangerous and abusive, and who now has been arrested with charges of attempted murder and are P.E. To me, it sounds like he's using the term intrusive thoughts in a deceptive way, or at best, in a way that didn't mean what he thought it meant. I'm not a doctor, so take this with a grain of salt, if you will. If these accusations are true, this sounds more like ideation and fantasies than it does intrusive thoughts. On top of all of this, Danny Burke's video displays alleged texts from Russ that Shay claims took place before they met. These are the only screenshots that I will be showing from Danny Burke's video because I find these to be very important for context. These texts state, I will breathe for you. I will control everything. You'll breathe only when I let you. You don't understand. You won't be able to breathe until I breathe life back into you. This was one of the most chilling parts of the entire video because if he sent her these texts before they even met up and then he allegedly proposes the idea to have her make a statement on video in case he accidentally ends her life, I'm just saying from all the information that we currently have access to, in my opinion, it sounds like there was more intent behind this. So going back a little bit, on July 24th, Russ McCamey made a post on Facebook stating, I know everyone has lots of questions concerning all of the recent craziness. This statement from the Tennessean by attorney Davis Griffin will explain the situation. Here's the bottom line that works for me. Always try to do the right thing and simply tell the truth. This is what I always try to do and hopefully everything will turn out just fine. He then attaches a screenshot from the Tennessean that stated, McCamey's attorney, Davis Griffin, said in a statement, by arresting Mr. McCamey, the state has now confirmed the predictions of Mr. McCamey's lawsuit filed against the Tennessee Attorney General a mere four months ago. We will be vigorously defending these fabricated charges. The truth will come out. So Am I correct in assuming that Russ's attorney is making an implication that there's something out against Russ and that like they're out to get him? 
basically. I do know he's involved with another lawsuit and it involves the Hulu documentary. Speaking of the Tennessean, the most recent update on that was in April and apparently Russ was seeking over $8 million in damages. And shortly after filing that lawsuit, he filed one against the Attorney General, which in this article it stated, the latest filing comes less than two weeks after Russ McKinney filed suit against the Tennessee Attorney General, seeking a court order to ensure that he won't have to testify in a state investigation he considers politically motivated. The only court date I was previously aware of was supposed to take place on August 6th. That information was provided in several articles regarding his arrest. That was until September 23rd, 2024. While apparently this never made it into an actual courtroom, a hearing did take place, to which both Russ and Shay attended. Now, Shay pointed out that Russ McKamey actually posted this to his Facebook before deleting it and making another post. The post stated, Happy Monday, all dressed up and nowhere to go. It's good to see the system actually work. Much support to our law enforcement community. And then there's a picture of Russ with a giant smile and two thumbs up. This is only speculation, but my assumption is that he was likely advised by his legal team to take that down in case this case ever does reopen. The new post, which is still currently available on his public Facebook page, states, Today, after two months of hell, the state voluntarily dismissed all charges against me, including domestic assault, E and two counts of attempted second degree I am grateful to the district attorney general to be known it is a different district attorney who has spent his entire 24 year career as a prosecutor. The last 14 of which he has been elected district attorney for this district. He personally handled this case and after considering everything my attorney presented to him, decided there was nothing to prosecute. There is then another photo of him and what appears to be his attorney. And then a photo of a court doc page, which I shared earlier. Russ then made another post sharing an updated article by the Tennessean, part of which stated, McKamey's attorney, Davis Griffin, issued a statement via email Monday after a Lawrence County General Sessions Court spokesperson confirmed that the charges were dropped against his client. After the district attorney general personally reviewed the evidence we collected over the past two months and spoke with Mr. McKamey's accuser, who was present in person this morning, he decided to voluntarily and unconditionally dismiss all four charges against Mr. McKamey because the allegations had no merit whatsoever. General Cooper's diligence and professionalism in his decision is commendable. I previously said the truth would come out. General Cooper's unqualified decision should tell you everything you need to know. That's a weird way to word it, but um, I find this extremely interesting wording that he states that it was dismissed when it actually was considered nola prosequi. Now, since it's so similar to a dismissal, I'm sure the reason why he used that wording is because more people know of that than this. But if the courts are using this and it has a checkbox of dismissal versus that, then in my opinion, and to be fair, I'm not a lawyer, so take this with a grain of salt, this sounds a little misleading in my opinion. There is then an update on that lawsuit against the other attorney general who I mentioned earlier, and it states, the lawsuit was dismissed on August 22nd, according to court records, but then, quote, we have filed a motion respectfully asking the court to reconsider the dismissal of Mr. McKamey's case against the defendants, Scrimetti and Lawrence. Scrimetti is the other attorney general that Russ was trying to sue. It then goes on to say, it is not the only pending litigation McKamey is involved in. On August 30th, McKamey filed a motion to dismiss his lawsuit against Hulu and production company North of Now Film and TV while maintaining his lawsuit against Justin Yurse, I hope I'm saying that correctly, an interview subject who participated in the documentary. The media defendants, including Hulu and the production company of North of now were dismissed from the case voluntarily by Mr. McKamey because the dispute between Mr. McKamey and the media defendants has been resolved amicably and satisfactorily. So in other words, I guess they came to some sort of agreement. As far as I'm aware, the Hulu documentary is still up. I watched it when it came out. I haven't watched it since. I don't know if they made any changes or not. But to continue, it states, they previously told the Tennessean in April that he was advised not to discuss the lawsuit, but said McKamey Manor has people and scamming people for years now and I will do what I legally can to make sure people know the truth and to try and prevent people from becoming victims. I'm not sure where that lawsuit's going to go. I mean, in my opinion, from what we've seen throughout so much footage, both on YouTube and in this documentary, from my perspective of what I've seen publicly, there seems to be evidence that 
abuse has allegedly taken place. And if you would like to know more about that, there are a plethora of videos online. Reckless Ben, Danny Burke, they've done videos all last year exposing a lot of stuff behind McKamey Manor. They have gone through hard drives and a whole bunch of other things. There has been tons of videos even before that documenting a lot of stuff. People who have visited the manor had shared their own stories. It's not just one person or two people. It is a pretty large community of people who have spoken out against this guy. If you want to know more, I did make a video on this last year that I will also link below. The Horror Road Trip did do a live stream and they interviewed Shay and she did share a lot more information regarding the hearing and regarding her situation. I'm going to leave that linked in the description below for you to watch if you want to see the entire thing and hear the story, but it seems like there were some things that took place that could have potentially affected the outcome of this hearing, such as a third party individual allegedly getting involved, allegedly breaking Russ's no contact order, and also allegedly manipulating Shay with vulnerabilities she had regarding this situation and allegedly guilt tripping her at points in this situation as well. I, I feel like a lot of this was handled wrong, um, in my opinion. Um, on so many levels, um, it, it did, it did, it went directly against the no contact order. Um, what ended up happening was, and I think you already touched on it, but one of these people who you were kind of talking to us through this person said, you, this is how we sa save him because he's going to die in jail. This is how you save him. Um, we need you to make a video saying X, Y, Z. Yeah, that's exactly what happened and I made the video. However, he wanted me to lie in the video um, and that's something I refused to do. So I just, I told the truth, but then I added flair like, oh, I, I didn't necessarily feel unsafe and stuff like you that. You downplayed and that's it. What, yeah, which is what got him out of it. Shay claims that during the hearing, one of the reasons why Russ didn't get charged with R.A. is because she didn't say no enough. Apparently saying no once isn't enough, allegedly. These are from her claims. I think I said something to the effect of, does it not matter that I said no? And he replied, but you stopped saying no. Um, in other words, he was saying, Thing. I should have said no the entire duration of being assaulted. Yeah. Um, so therefore, it was assault because I was silent. Like, I was silent. I never gave consent. So because I was silent after saying no and it being ignored, like, he had his hand on my throat. I'm not going to keep saying no and piss him off. Like I said, I'll leave the live stream linked below if you're interested in hearing more because there is a lot more to go over. What also leaves a knot in my stomach is actually something that Ben says in this video. He basically says that if Russ doesn't go to jail, he's just going to end up doing this to somebody else. Just say hypothetically, he doesn't go to jail. He's going to get a new girlfriend and do the same thing. The next girl will be like, I'm special. Russ just didn't like his other girlfriends, but they like me. That is an absolutely terrifying thought. Again, please be sure to check out Danny Burke's video linked in the description below, as well as the Horror Road Trips live stream with Shay in it. Gonna have a lot more details and a lot more information that's pretty graphic, I will say. It goes into a very dark story regarding Russ McCamey. Russ also posted this on his Facebook page. In case you missed this statement from my attorney from the Channel 2 News article yesterday, I think it's very important and quite eye-opening. As always, attention to detail is always the main key. Brent Cooper, who has been a prosecutor for his entire 24-year career and the elected district attorney general for the 22nd Judicial District for the last 10 years, spent two hours personally reviewing key evidence from our investigation of this case before concluding that nothing in this case was prosecutable against Mr. McCamey. General Cooper met with Mr. McCamey's accuser in person and took her claims and responses to our evidence into account before making this decision. Mr. McCamey is grateful for the diligence and professional of both the Lawrence County Sheriff's Department and General Cooper in handling this case. Unfortunately, the fervor surrounding these and other allegations against Mr. McCamey is severely uninformed. There is also a prominent trend in our 
our culture of exploiting victim status for attention and relevance, which makes dedicating resources to justice for real victims more difficult than it should be. Most sad of all, there remains a group of unhinged people who have nothing better to do with their lives but harass Mr. McCamey and obsess over his every move. Anyone evaluating the merit of other allegations against Mr. McCamey should wrongly consider the outcome of this case and the credibility of those who investigated it, which includes several individuals featured in the 2023 Hulu documentary about Mr. McCamey and who are sources for the ongoing Attorney General investigation. Now, because of this being shared around, Shay has decided to make her own response to this situation because this is worded in a way that makes her look really bad when she wasn't even the one who called the police. Not to say that her doing so would be bad in itself, but you'll understand why I say that in a minute. So Shay's response is actually a two hour long live stream. I'll link it down below. Please show her kindness if you do decide to go over and watch her video. She has also been interviewed by the Horror Road Trip and there is a lot that was shared in just this live stream alone, but I'm only going to take a few moments to go over some extremely important details that she mentioned. So like I just mentioned, it's important to note that Shay clarifies that she was not the one who called the police on Russ. At the time of Russ's arrest, she was in a vulnerable state and still had a lot of feelings for him, which considering the statistic that it takes a survivor of DV around seven attempts before they finally leave their partner, that's actually pretty understandable. Shay claimed that when the police arrived, she told them what happened, but she said she didn't want him to get into any trouble and that he just needs mental help. But based off of the evidence the police have gathered at the scene, they decided to arrest him. In this live stream, Shay mentioned blaming herself for his arrest and feeling guilty for even speaking to the police when they arrived. And this is not an uncommon feeling or situation for victims of abuse, by the way. Shay also claims that in a state of panic, trying to repair the situation and save Russ, she has not only texted him saying that she loved and miss him, which again is not uncommon in DV cases, especially for a situation that happened so recently, but she also mentioned saying he never tried to kill me because she didn't believe that what he did should have been seen as attempted murder, which at the time of his arrest, it was classified as such because she passed out from him her. The big thing that she mentions though is that she allegedly made a video for him giving him the same account that she reported to the police that night of the arrest. And so that was my frame of mind for several weeks. Um, so I made one video for him giving the same account I gave to the police. Like I remained honest about um, I don't think he was trying to hurt me. I don't I remained honest about um, I said no and it continued and then I stopped saying no because it continued regardless which isn't the first time that had happened with him. After that, Shay claims that Russ started breaking a no contact order and that he also used a third party to communicate with Shay. Shay claims that this person manipulated and guilt tripped her. This person allegedly tried convincing or really manipulating her into believing that if she did not save Russ, he would end up going to prison and that all of these terrible things would happen to him there and that it would all be Shay's fault. Shay also claimed that Russ allegedly once said that if he were to ever go to prison, he would end his life. So it seems like she may have also felt responsible for his life as well. Because of that, she stated that she made another video for us. She said that she wasn't lying about what happened, but downplayed the situation. You downplayed that's it. What, yeah, which is what got him out of it. All of this was taken into account and used against her during this hearing, which to be fair, never even made it into a courtroom. Along with claiming that the DA allegedly said that because you didn't keep saying no after the first time you said no, despite Shay claiming she never once agreed or said yes, she was just silent after saying no, which in my opinion would count as a fight or flight or freeze situation. But again, from my understanding, because she didn't say no the entire time, it allegedly didn't matter. Is there a specific times one has to say no for no to mean no? That sounds so ridiculous just saying out loud, let alone hearing that from attorneys. Which again did not officially get dismissed but was considered nulla prosequi, similar to a dismissal but from my understanding being more open to the possibility of the case being reopened at a later date. Shay's brother also claimed that the DA allegedly told Shay, you're young and pretty, you should just move on. But if that is true, that is blood boiling. 
boiling. Another thing not just mentioned by Shay, but also her brother and her sister-in-law, was that the day they went to this hearing, they were told that Russ would likely have ended Shay's life at some point, or could wind up ending somebody else's life in the future. He told me that he believed Russ was planning to kill me. Yes. Um, maybe not during that interaction, but that he was planning to kill me at some point. And I also, if I'm not mistaken, it was during this point where he mentioned wanting to stop Russ because he said it like it's matter-of-factly like he's going to end up with somebody. Yeah. yeah. And they need to stop him. These are the, that's the DA saying those things. As of right now, I can only say that these are accusations, but as a human being reading this, hearing this, and seeing so much about this, it is obviously very frustrating and infuriating to hear so much of this information. With that being said, if everything mentioned in this live stream and the Horror Road Trips live stream is true, then this case was handled disastrously. I genuinely think that people should be aware of this guy because it's gone beyond the levels of his unethical haunted house practices. He's had several documentaries made about him and how dangerous he potentially could be. Many, many people have talked about this guy online. Several people have come forward sharing their stories and experiences involving him and accusations against him, including ex-girlfriends who have made similar accusations and after being arrested with charges of RP and second degree Again, charges aren't convictions. Right now, he is walking free. Since this guy is able to roam the streets still, as Reckless Ben said, this situation could happen to somebody else. Allegedly, this alleged situation could happen to somebody else. Also, before ending this video, I'm going to link below a donation for the Red Cross. This is for disaster relief for states like North Carolina and Tennessee affected by Hurricane Helene. I'm going to pin it in my comments down below as well. I know this is completely unrelated to the rest of this video, but I really just wanted to add this in. I chose Red Cross because it is a nonprofit and is a well-known charity that is trying to help this situation. Thank you so much if you've made it all the way to the end of this video. Thank you so much to everybody supporting me on Patreon and through membership. And with that being said, definitely check out the links in the description below again. One last thing I wanna include is the hotline that Danny Burke shared in his video for anybody who may be experiencing DV of any kind. Thank <laughs> you.